to Tri Day Friday. My name is Lynn Lush. I'm training manager with FSJ, and I'm so happy to be here. This is such a fun day to be able to come and, and share with you some uh, inspiration that I hope maybe you're going to give a try. Or, of course, Try Day Friday is just that. It's something that we're going to try and, and figure out and make something pretty and, and have some fun crafting and creating. So whether you're watching this live with us right now or you're watching the replay, thank you so much for stopping by. We so appreciate you. And I want to share with you that, you know, I've, I've been thinking, you know, this, this time of year is, is kind of all about um, special memories and having traditions and, and whatnot. And I was thinking back at, at some memories that I have that are uh, very special to me in regards to my crafting. I started crafting with my grandma so many years ago. And as time went on, one of the things and special memories that I have is, is when I was crafting with my mom and I was introduced to specifically paper crafting um, many years ago and we started scrapbooking. And I loved that special opportunity that we got together and, and share um, time together and create. And we created um, many beautiful albums and whatnot. And one of the things I, you know, in part of these memories, I was thinking back on all the different tools and, and how things have changed in the years that I've been crafting. You know, back when I started scrapbooking, we had some good tools, but we have so many new tools in today's crafting world that have kind of changed how we, you know, make pretty things. But one of the things that we started with was stencils. And I don't know, it, you know, if you've been crafting for a while, you probably remember those stencils, right? They had, you know, a lot, but not as many certainly as we have now. And the stencils that were available back then were, probably a little more basic. You know, they had more open um, areas that you could trace around. A lot of the, the reasons I used a stencil, we used a stencil was because we needed to create a template and then we'd cut around it. We didn't have the dyes and whatnot. So I thought it would be fun for us to kind of take back um, something that's been around for quite some time and talk about stencils. Fun Stamper's Journey has, hi Karen, it's great to have you here with us. It, you know, it's so great to have so many different choices to work with, but FSJ has so many stencils to choose from. And I thought, though, that I wanted to go specifically with one stencil. And that's our Buffalo Check stencil. Because, you know, I don't know if you've seen it. It's been around for a, quite some time, but it's almost a trend is having the buffalo check. I, have you seen, you know, the buffalo check is just um, makes you feel warm and cozy. It reminds me of that warm buffalo check blanket and whatnot. So I thought I'd use our buffalo check stencil. So what I want to do is just kind of share with you some little tips that I came across in working with our stencils. So the one thing I want to first of all do, I've, I've pulled together a piece of our cardstock and this is our pomegranate splash cardstock. And of course I have my Buffalo Check stencil right here. And because when we're using stencils, we want to make sure it doesn't move around. Now, if you haven't used stencils before, I really encourage you to do so because they're so much fun. There's so many things that you can do with them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some of our electric tape here. And this is kind of like um, a, a sticky note type stick here. Um, this is really great to use. So I'm going to go ahead and hold down my stencil by using my tape. So this kind of gives me nice little places to place my tape. I'm going to place it where I'm not going to be doing any coloring. And I want to make sure that I hold it down pretty good so it doesn't move around. But I'm also going to use my hands to hold it in place as well. So now that I have it in place, I'm going to start 
using some of my materials to start coloring it in. Now there's a variety of different ways that you can, uh, and products that you can use to stencil. You know, these days we have the mixed media, so you could use the mixed media products such as the gel and the paste, and you can use acrylic paint. There's so many different options, right? But I wanted to do some basic. I wanted to kind of go back to some of my, my roots of, of scrapbooking and roots of crafting, paper crafting. So I'm going to use our True Color Fusion ink. And because I want to use and make a traditional buffalo check, I'm going to be using my black licorice ink right here. And a little tip that I came across when I was practicing this. Now, as I mentioned earlier, when I first started using stencils, most of the areas were more open, so it was easier to kind of get into those areas and color and draw in and so on and so forth. Um, but now a lot of the stencils are so intricate. So, but I initially thought, well, why don't I use one of our daubers that we have? We have the large dauber and the small one. This is a large one. So I started using the dauber and I, I'm going to go ahead and hold my paper down and my stencil down. But as I was coloring in, it was working fine for the open spaces, but I was noticing that when I picked it up, it wasn't quite getting the area right here for that little detail. See right there? It wasn't getting that. So I decided that I was going to go back to another tool that I use on a regular basis. And this is our sponges. Now this is how our sponges come. They, they come three in a pack. And um, it's a special sponge that um, allows our ink to just um, work smoothly and easily on. And then what I do is I cut it into four little pieces, okay? That way I can use my sponge and, and get more use out of it. So I cut it into a wedge, and then of course, and I just keep it, um, and I'll only use it for this particular color so I don't um, mix them up. So what I'm gonna do is, of course, I'm just going to dab on ink onto my sponge, and now what I'm gonna do is just simply follow the areas. Now you'll notice here on this particular buffalo check here, the lines are going this way. To make it easier, I'm just kind of brushing along the area here to kind of follow in the lines. And you know, I could qu do this quite quick, but you know what? Crafting should be, it should be relaxing and fun. So I'm, I'm this isn't taking long at all. I'm just going to kind of rush in there. So as I'm doing this, I have a question. Do you actually, does anyone know where Buffalo Chuck, the name came to be, how it came to be? I did some researching and the Buffalo Chuck print dates back to 1850, if you can believe it or not. The 1850, so over 150 years ago, the Buffalo Chuck print was created and it was created by a company initially by a company named Woolrich Woolen Mills and they're they're a, a fabric company a, a um, company that sells shirts and what was interesting it's been rumored that the gentleman who owned the company actually owned a herd of buffalo and that's why it's called the Buffalo Check. And so that's how it got its name. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So of course you could just take time and, and brush along there. And I'm gonna pull this off. Look how pretty that is. I, I just actually get little goosebumps when I see this because it brings back such fun memories of, of warm, cozy times with, like I said, with either a blanket or a warm, um, buffalo check shirt or whatnot. So depending on what I want to use my print for, um, I just cut this down the size of an A2 size card, but I'm going to use this as a panel. So I'll eventually be cutting it down a little bit more. So if you can see how easy this is, now I actually missed a little spot there. I don't think it's going to show too much, but um, Again, you just take your time and, and lay it down and so on and so forth. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to share with you the project that I created. Would you like to see the project that I created with this fun little print? All right. Now we're still in the holiday season, so I thought this would bring a warm, 
loving message to someone. So let's go ahead and talk about some of the, the items that I, I used with this. Of course, I put it on the base of a whipped cream card, card stock, um, then backed it up with black licorice card stock to correlate. And then, of course, I have my print and I cut my print down a little bit more. And then I used our Holiday Joy stamp set and that's where the peace, love, and joy. And of course, I stamped it initially with our uh, clear pigment ink and then used our white embossing powder and, and heat set it. And so that's how we have that. Now, if you want to know where this particular little piece right here, it's got the um, little rectangle. Well, that comes from, and Kim's helping me out, that actually comes from our special day tags die set. I don't have that one to show you, but I just stamped it on there, heat set it, and there's that. Now, the other piece that you'll see here is from our branch and cone die set. So the branches, I just cut those out um, and added those to my project. And something that we haven't actually displayed a lot that I actually like kind of oversighted myself and I'm like, I think I need some of these is our holiday mix and match pieces. All these little elements. Now I have to tell you, if we can get in there a little closer, Roy, I want to show you how fun these elements are. These are not just paper. These these are there's buttons, and they're kind. They have a, a, a coating on them. Um, this is like a, a button here that's um, got a coating on it. So an acrylic. So there's a lot of little elements in this little little pack here. So this is a fun little pack. Now, you know, I know that it's the holiday season, but of course, remember that after the holidays are over, we're going to have so many different memories that we're going to need to scrapbook and we're going to need to work on that you might need these later. So don't forget to pick these up because these are absolutely adorable. And of course, I have it here on my little card and I have a little bow with the whipped cream thread. Um, I just absolutely um, love this and I hope that you enjoy it as well. So let me go ahead and share with you some other inspiration with using the Buffalo check print because you know it doesn't just make Buffalo check print in in this traditional color. What if we were to use the same stencil and change up the color options? Well you know what you have a whole different look by just taking your your cardstock using the black licorice, and I just did a few of them here. Look at all of those different looks. So remember that this doesn't have to just be about a holiday card. I, my mind was just going wild in regards to all the different inspiration pieces that I could create with the different colors here. Um, I absolutely love this. So to kind of change it up again a little bit more, I said, well, what if we did tone on tone and see what that looks like. Again, I'm using the same stencil. This is one little stencil here and I absolutely love it. So I did this one right here. This right here is oatmeal cookie cardstock using the same stencil, just laid it on here. And guess what? This is oatmeal cookie ink as well. So look how pretty that is. I, I absolutely love it. Now, of course, you can use it as the full panel or you can cut your panels down. It depends, you, you know, you might only want to use a portion of it and put it on the side of your card or scrapbook page or whatnot. And then this one right here is using our haystack card stock. Now, I did not use the haystack ink. I wanted to try something a little different. This is actually Summer Days ink. So again, haystack card stock with the Summer Days ink and then I, again, I just laid it over there and I started stenciling away. Um, so easy, but so many different options. Now, one of the things I want to share with you, if you look at my stencil here, there's this little area right here. And you might wonder, what, what's that for? Why is this little extra piece right here? Well, that's actually to help you if you're creating a larger piece of of cardstock using something larger. So I wanted to kind of illustrate this for you on how to use it and expand it. So remember, I was sharing with you that I was working on, I was introduced to stencils when I was working with scrapbook pages. So one of the things I could do right here is I could use my stencil. And of course, it's only this big, but how do I expand it more? Well, I simply 
I started it initially and I used my ink just like I did before using my sponge and I stenciled it. Now you'll notice right over here, there's nothing. So as I'm creating right here, it's not allowing any ink to go there. And of course, that's what I want. I don't want any ink. If I, if I went off the page, then of course I wouldn't be able to expand it. So it allows me to do this, but what it allows me to do in addition is to expand my print. So what I'm gonna do now is because this area was blocked off, I can now pick this up, bring it over here, and then just line it up. And I'm going to, of course, push it down with my tape. And guess what I'm gonna do? Oops, I'm gonna make sure, just take my time. Of course, when you're doing your own, you'll want to make sure that you just take your time. I'm kind of rushing through it a little bit more, but pushing that down there. And guess what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna do the same thing, is I'm gonna start. Now I'd probably put a piece of paper under here so I don't get any, any ink further than this area, like I did right there. Um, but just to kind of give you an idea to see how you can expand it. I'm going to continue to ink that up and I'm only gonna do a portion of it just to give you an idea. So easy, it doesn't take a lot of time to do this. And like I said, we have so many different options in our stencils that you can just create so many different beautiful images. And I peel that off and look at that. I can just expand that across the page. Now, of course, like I said, I would have taken a little bit more care and maybe covered my paper up, but you could continue on. And then of course, I have this little extra space over here. Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna do the same thing, bring it over here and expand it out. Then I have a full page of the image that I want. And it was so quick and easy. I don't have to have the printed paper. I can create my own paper by using my stencils. So I wanna leave you with one last little project that I created. And I hope that you enjoy this one as well, because remember what I said was, what's fun about this particular stencil is sure we made the traditional Buffalo check look image and we created different colors and whatnot but it's not all about just the season and the winter season and whatnot. What about spring? What about fall? What, what about, you know, you, you might wanna have checks during that period of time too. Guess what? It looks absolutely beautiful. So here's a new project that I created. Now this is using the chambray shirt cardstock. I use the same stencil, use the same black licorice ink, but with this particular one, I used our Cottage Bouquet stamp set. And of course, and I have the little thankful image and I just detail cut around there. And I used our circle around die set to create this little circle right here, whipped cream thread and some sparkle silk right there and a little piece of our printed paper. And isn't that a fun project? Now, if that wasn't enough, I'm gonna just leave you with one last little piece of inspiration. You know, you can create the plaid in so many different colors, traditional and go a little non-traditional using the basic cardstock with the black, but then go uh, tone on tone with the same color scheme. But what if you wanted to create a plaid, right? So easy to do. And this is just a simple little way to use it. And simply what I did with this particular one if we can look at this, is I use the simple whipped cream cardstock, my black licorice ink that I've used with many of the other ones. And then what I did was I used our ruler, our FSJ ruler, steel ruler, and I just laid it down there. I used our Journey Color Burst pencils. You can of course use any different style drawing item that you, if you have, um, the, the pens or whatnot, you can use those, but I had these available and they worked absolutely beautifully. So I just draw down each of the areas here. I turn it, do the same thing. And now I've have plaid and I don't have to worry about finding that perfect piece of printed paper. So anyways, 
I had fun trying this. Um, it certainly brought brought back some fun memories for me from my days of scrapbooking with my mom that I will treasure forever. I hope that you're able to create some special memories as well. So I want you to now take the time and the, the creative inspiration. And I want you to, whether you create buffalo check plaid or not, is to try something new by working with some of our stencils. We wanna thank you so much for, like I said, watching us live here on our Facebook page. But if you're watching us on our YouTube channel, we thank you so much for stopping by. We always appreciate if you would like, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel or any of our, sub, um, our different um, channels that we have. We appreciate it so much. So now it's your time to bring paper to life. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, everyone.